What's up, beautiful? I'm your girl, Kiki Ramsey, and okay, today we're going to be talking about something that is super important, especially right now in the time that we're in, in our state of economy and this pandemic. I'm going to be giving you eight tips to successfully telework, right? So here's the deal. We are in some absolute trying times. These are times that none of us have seen before. Um, and it's hard. It is definitely hard. I mean, everyone is affected by this thing. And my heart goes out to just everyone, right? Like we're all in this together. If you are a business or, I mean, you had a job, I'm pretty sure you are just affected. I mean, we all are, right? And so with that being said, a lot of um, jobs, if you're fortunate enough to actually still have your job or you are still in school or something like that, chances are you have been moved to a teleworking, a teleeducation type thing, type community. And in my coaching practice, I work with a lot of professional women who have had to go from the office to the home. And I wanted to come and give you just some tips that you could use to better manage your time while you're actually teleworking. Because I know that this can be difficult for some people who are used to being in the office. Um, it can be a difficult transition. And these are some of the topics, like I said, that I've been coaching some of my clients on. And so I wanted to come and actually be able to give you some of the same information so that maybe you're successful in what you want to do and what you want to accomplish at home versus the office. Okay, so let's, if you are ready for this topic, I want you to stay tuned. But first, I want you to please subscribe. I love all of the, all of the likes that you have. So, and hit the like button and also the button for notifications. So, because I'm going to be doing these videos every single week for you. So, subscribe. All right, so let's hop right into it. So the first one, the first tip to successfully telework is to plan out your schedule the night before. Now, I know <clears throat> sometimes we don't wanna do that. <laughs> sometimes planning out our schedule is the last thing that we actually wanna do. But I'm telling you, if you really want to be productive, um, because chances are, you're already a pretty high powered and productive woman in the office. And if you want to be able to translate that at home as well, then you want to plan out your schedule. So get one of your handy dandy uh, schedules, calendar. I literally put everything in my calendar because it helps me out just to keep myself on track. Um, but you can write it down. I even have like just these little cards that I just like seriously like <clears throat> write stuff down. And here's the thing. I like writing stuff down because I like marking it off. I like striking through it. It's just something that's real cathartic about striking through um, a goal that you had for yourself that you wanted to accomplish for the day. And so I suggest writing it down, but just write them down somewhere or put them on your phone the night before because a lot of times when you wake up the next morning, and you're like, oh my God, I got to figure out what I got to do. I got to figure out what I got to do. It's too late. You're probably not going to have the most productive day that you could. So number one is to write out your schedule the night before. Number two, you're going to love me for this one. I know you're working from home, but girl, wake up and get dressed. Wake up and get dressed. This is my home office. It's my home studio. It's, it's everything. And I wake up. And I look like this every day. Why? Because you do better. You're more productive when you actually get yourself dressed. Now, I'm not going to say I might not have sweatpants on <laughs> underneath, right? But from the waist up, honey, I am together, okay? <laughs> and so I'm just saying, if, and if you are like teleworking, a lot of times you might have these video conferencing. So you really do need to get up and get yourself together, at least from the head to the waist, right? That that's at least you can do that much, right? But I'm trying to tell you, it does make you more productive. When you look put together, you feel 
confident about yourself and your ability to get stuff done. And that's what we need to do. We need to get stuff done, right? You got this list that you done already made. And so put yourself together, look good. I am not saying you got to put on makeup or anything like that. Whatever makes you feel good, right? If you wouldn't go to work in sweatpants or, you know, a sweatshirt and a hoodie and stuff like that, maybe you just want to do a, a notch up, right? But number two is to wake up and actually get yourself together, whatever that really means for you, okay? Number three, create a space that is designated for work only. Chances are you already got this. But I'm just saying, I'm just telling you because I'm, I'm, I know that this can be an issue. Do not work from your couch in front of the TV or anything like that because you're not going to be as productive as you want to be. I mean, if you're fortunate enough to have your own home office, then you good. If not, maybe you can get a desk or I have a beautiful dining room over here where I sometimes I switch where I work at. I might go to the dining room cause I'm feeling working in that space over working at my desk, whatever it is, just designate a place for you to work because what I'm going to tell you next is going to cause for you to like leave that space, um, at some point during the day. So designate a good space where you can actually be productive and work. And, and, and chances are probably it's not going to be your couch. I know you might be like, Kiki, girl, I'll be working from my couch. I'll be getting a lot of stuff done. No. Leave your couch for relaxing and watching TV. That's going to be your downtime. But put someplace else in order for you to actually work from, right? It's going to be the best use of your time. Okay? All right. So number four. This is super important. Super, super important. They're all important, but this is really important. Decide what time you're going to start your day. And chances are you're probably doing this the night before as well. You're going to decide what time you're going to start your day. Are you going to start your day at 8 o'clock? Are you going to start your day at 6 o'clock? Are you going to start your day at 10 o'clock? Whatever that is for you, decide beforehand what time you're going to start your day and set your alarm clock. Set your alarm clock at night to get up so that you can be at your desk, your designated workspace at that time. It is super important that you do that because if you decide what time you're going to start your day, you're going to get off to an amazing start and you're going to be more productive. Okay? So number five. Now this, this one right here is my favorite. This is actually Kiki Ramsey's favorite. Um, and it is put exercise into your day, put some kind, some type of exercise into your day. Now I would say start off your day with exercise, right? But that's not for everyone. I get up around five or five 30 every single morning and I work out, right? I do this about six days, sometimes seven days a week. I do like working out. I like sweating. I like just purging all of that what I might have ate the day before or the night before that wasn't good for me, whatever. I like getting it out and really starting my day off that way. It makes my brain wake up. I mean, all of that. It's just so good. And then by the time I get myself together, I ain't got to come home and work out. I don't have to do none of that because guess what? I didn't did my workout early in the morning. Now, let me just tell you, I'm not necessarily a morning person. It sucks getting up at 5 o'clock. 5.30, 4, 4 o'clock, 4.30, whatever. I have friends who get up at 4 and 4.30, right? It, it all sucks, at least to me, right? But it makes my day like 1,000% better, like 1,000. Um, and so I'm just saying for you, throughout this day, figure out at some point when you can work. Now, with us being in the time that we're in right now, a lot of times, I think it's good if you can go outside and take a walk because we're all kind of stuck in our house in isolation and the weather might be good outside. And so maybe you can on your lunch break actually take a walk um, for 20, 30 minutes and come back 
and then start your work again. I mean, there's so many different options that you have in order to do this with. And so I'm not being rigid and I'm telling you not to be rigid as well. Just figure out some kind of way to move your body because it's going to make you feel better. All right. So number six, <laughs> you're going to like me for this one as well. Take a real lunch break and get away from your desk or your designated work area, right? Take a real lunch break. So I know, I know you girl, I know some of you are workaholics. I know it because I coach you, <laughs> right? I know that you are so determined to get your work done and there's such a big demand on your time. You probably getting emails, you probably getting pulled into meeting after meeting, of course, virtually, but you're probably stuck at that place um, all day that this is difficult. But I'm trying to tell you, you need to take a real designated lunchtime away from your desk. Like I said, go for a walk, have dinner, I mean, excuse me, have lunch at, at your kitchen table, something, but really take that time to decompress. Because here's the thing, none of us can literally go 100% 24-7 or eight hours a day. It's, it's nearly impossible to really do. And if you do do that, you're probably wearing yourself out or even burning yourself out. And so let's not even talk about burnout because that's a whole nother video, right? But if you do this, you're going to give your yourself a chance to re-energize, to get yourself together, stretch it out, you know, all that good stuff. I mean, I got two pound weights downstairs and sometimes I'll have them up here and I'm like, you know, just really get myself loosened up so that I can do the rest of my job the way that I want to do it with excellence, right? Because we do everything in excellence around here, right? So take that lunch break away from your desk, away from your designated work area and get some good lunch, maybe go outside, just take it away from the desk, okay? All right. Number seven, this is important. You should decide what time you're going to stop your work day. Now, I'm speaking to all of my workaholics out there, all of my determined to succeed mamacitas. Like, I want you, and you're probably doing this the night before as well, but you are deciding when you're gonna stop working because you already got a schedule and you know your job and you know how long it takes you to do things. Sometimes you're gonna to have to force yourself to do this, right? Like I get it, but here's the thing. You cannot run yourself raggedy. You cannot run yourself in the ground because we need you girl, like we need you. So I need for you to literally just stop and figure out what time you're going to stop. So I know for me, my kids um, are in daycare and they normally get home around 4.30, sometimes 5. But my stopping time every single day is normally at 4.30. I'm off. I mean, my, my people know, don't call me between 4.30 and 7 o'clock. Yes, my kids go to bed at 7, hey. Um, but don't call me during this time because I'm with my children. We're having dinner. We're having fun time. We're playing with each other. All of that, right? We're doing all those things during that time. And so, therefore, I know what time I have to stop. Now, you might not have kids. You might not have that thing that makes you have to stop your day. But you, even if you don't have that thing, you have to put it in place for yourself. Like it is that important that you put it in place because now you can go um, enjoy the rest of your day, have that glass of wine, wind down, because guess what? You got to start over and do it again tomorrow, okay? And number eight, take periodic 10 to 15 minute breaks throughout the day, right? We have very short attention spans. All of us do. And so if you um, want to be more productive, taking 10 to 15 minute breaks throughout the day is only going to help you do that. So you can get up from your desk, you can stretch, um, you can go for another walk um, and all that kind of stuff. Just try not to go to the kitchen and keep back, back and forth to the refrigerator. <laughs> I'm telling you. 
telling you, these hard times, I know the struggle, right? When you're at home and you're not used to being at home and you have all these things that are in arm's reach of you, it's easy to get yourself off track with your health goals. So I'm just saying, maybe you make some different decisions during this time, but still take those breaks so that you can get your mind right and get back into the groove of being really productive. So there you have it. These are just eight tips that will help you successfully telework. I know that this is a difficult time. It's a difficult time for all of us. Um, and I'm praying for you. I'm praying for your family. I'm praying for your situation. I know that you've been affected in some kind of way because I absolutely have. I'm a small business. And so I've been detrimentally affected by this. But I choose, I choose to understand that God is still real and that I am going to overcome this. And so are you. We as a nation are going to overcome this thing. I mean, I just want to be here to help you. So, hey, leave me, um, tell me if these tips actually helped you down in the comments. Um, what, which one are you going to implement into your teleworking? Hopefully you're going to implement them all, but which one of these actually resonated the most with you? Until next time, girlfriend, stay positive.